The C100 model, this one is a one unit full rack width device, which is the big brother of the C50 module. This one has been demoed in another video, so I'll just explain how this extends the functionality that we have already seen in this one. And the most obvious change that you can see from the front is that we have a display over here and we also have a slider right here. So when the unit is connected to an ATEM switcher, we see it over here connected with some cameras, we can operate the switcher just as we did with the C50. So a press of the cut button, we can see on program that it just cuts. But what the slider does is to be a T-bar for you. And you see it in the software application, it corresponds to the T-bar illustrated there. And of course you also see it on the program right there, a program over here. The display has the functionality to uh, show us various menu items, apart from telling us that currently the unit is nicely connected to a ATEM 1ME switcher with a certain firmware version and so on. Um, clicking this dial means that we can browse through the menu options, as you can see. And uh, the first two options we find is to select the clip currently in Media Bank 1 and 2. And uh, I have an example of how this could be useful. Imagine that I want to apply a lower third, like my name, on the program. Uh, the way I can do that is using the downstream key, and I can connect it to Media Bank 1, for instance. And in Media Bank 1, I currently have my own name. But let's say it was not me standing right here. I can now browse through the different options in the Media Bank. You see how turning the dial will simply give me other names from the media bank. And when I'm ready, I can of course switch it in. Like that. Another option in the menu is that you can uh, decide how these user buttons 1 through 4 are programmed. And uh, if I enter this menu, you can currently see that I have um, downstream Kia 1 enabled picture and picture, VGA with picture and picture, and the auto function. And uh, if you've seen the video where I demonstrate the C50 module, you know that these are the functionalities already uh, hard-coded into these buttons in the software. But uh, on this unit, we have the opportunity of assigning different functionality to these. So currently, this is what would happen. I would uh, press uh, U1 and I enable and disable uh, downstream Kia 1, which currently holds the lower third. But as soon as I change, um, sorry, up here, you can see that I now had, have a different configuration. So now it's a downstream Kia 1 and 2 and auto. So there are some of the same functions, but a little change up there. I now enable upstream Kia 1, 2, 3, 4. So um, the easiest way to see this is probably looking at the software right here. So when I push these buttons, you can see that as I go through the buttons in the software, the upstream keys are enabled and disabled, etc. And uh, I have also the functionality that you can select color generator 1 and 2, black and bars for the preview bus. So pressing right here, you see color generator 1, color generator 2, bars and black. What is the final option? Ah, there were no final options. These are the ones I've programmed in just for the uh, purpose of demonstrating. Again, this can be entirely configured as you would like the functionality to be inside the menu. If we go to the next one, you'll see that we have transitions. So inside here, we can now select what type of transition are we working with. Do we want to have a mix, a dip, a wipe? And now we should have a wipe. So Let's select for the preview bus camera 5 and we now see a wipe transition used and we can go back to mix transition. We have mix transition. We can also exit that and go to this menu which is fade to black and inside that one we can decide how many frames should we uh, have for the fade to black functionality. And finally, if you go to this one, you can actually execute a fade to black. So when I press this button, you'll see that, oh, sorry, that exited. So this one, it will have a fade to black up here and we can press it again and it will go back to the picture again. And um, 
Then we can also select for the auxiliary outputs, output, output one, two, and three. And the final is that we can do some network configuration to determine the IP address of the switcher and this module. The C100 model comes in two varieties. This is the deluxe version, which has a very beautiful aluminum front. But we also have a, um, another model, which is, um, well, it looks differently, let's say that. But it has exactly the same functionality, the same buttons, but it's easier to produce. And um, it's uh, basically just a uh, rack blind, which has holes cut out for the various components. And if you look at it from the downside behind this protection uh, rail, you can see all the circuit boards, etc. And inside this box, you can see we have um, the Arduino hardware, which is an Arduino Mega and an Ethernet shield on top connected to the units inside. It's uh, still a pretty decent piece of hardware and I feel it's also quite sturdy and especially if it's built into a rack, it's, it's obviously not a problem. If you have any questions regarding these products, just send me an email and I'll be happy to help you out. Just remember that this is uh, open hardware and open software, so you can actually download all the information for free from the internet and you can assemble it yourself. Or you can ask me and my staff to help you assemble it or customize it or whatever you need in this regard.